Hey folks, Eric from Another Voice with Eric and Friends here with you today, mainly talking to my South Carolina friends about legislation that I think we need to act on. Wait, wait, what, what are you looking at? Okay, fine. I don't have any hair on the top of my head. Why? I did it for the children. No, seriously. Uh, last uh, Sunday, St. Baldrick Foundation had a fundraiser here in Greenville uh, to raise funds to fight childhood cancer. And Jonathan, my co-host, and I both had our heads shaved. Uh, it's a little cold. Uh, in order to raise money, we raised $250 through the show. The event here in Greenville raised over $100,000 to fight uh, childhood cancer. And I've got to tell you, St. Baldrick's Foundation is a great organization. And uh, they'll still take donations from you if you would like to, to just donate money to them. They focus on cures for childhood cancers, as well as ways to help children who beat cancer, but later on in their lives suffer complications because of uh, the medicines that took to beat cancer. So I would encourage you to check out the St. Baldrick's Foundation. Now, back to the subject at hand. Uh, it is important for South Carolina residents to contact their representatives. Uh, there is a law that just passed out of the Senate. It's out in, in the House called Emma's Law uh, that deals with tougher, sen tougher uh, sentencing to drunk drivers. Uh, currently, first offenders... Uh, drunk driving get a license suspension and while that sounds like a good deterrent it usually isn't uh, many people uh, get uh, caught drunk driving again while under suspension and South Carolina decided that we want to do something that 21 other states do and that we do for repeat offenders and that is to require um, an, a like a breathalyzer an interlocking uh, tool for a car so that uh, someone who's been convicted of drunk driving would have to have installed in their car uh, a breathalyzer type machine that would not allow their car to uh, be started if they had if they had alcohol uh, I believe 0.15 is what they've settled on alcohol level um, this seems to be a very good effective form of legislation. The concept here is someone's broken the law and they need to pay the penalty. But along with that, we need to protect the public. And this, while a burden on the person who is required to have that added to their car, and they would also face uh, penalties if they drove a car that didn't have it. They borrowed someone's car. So uh, it's going to help keep them from harming the public again, at least for that period that they have to do that. Um, so I encourage you to contact your representatives, your state representatives, about voting for this law. But I've got to, I've got to point out one thing. Representative Chris Murphy uh, was responding to calls that some of the changes that people want to make to the law would just be more... Uh, benefit to attorneys defending people with DUI. And in particular, uh, he defended himself by saying uh, one of the provisions was that somebody required to use an ignition interlock device and who was caught up in an extraordinary uh, circumstance such as a life-threatening incident, uh, the right to appeal a punitive uh, action taken against him. In other words, Representative uh, Murphy is saying, hey, if a guy's drunk but finds himself in a life-threatening situation and uses another vehicle, there should be a little bit of leeway there. I want you to think about that for a minute. If a man who is drunk at a .15 alcohol level is caught up in a life-threatening situation, not of his own uh, creation, because in most cases, the guy that's blowing a 1.5 and is a, in a life-threatening situation is probably going to be the cause of it. Uh, I may be harsh on that. I think common sense would say that if there were some situation 
that there could be some flexibility. I don't think it needs to be built into the law. So what I'm encouraging you to do is to contact your representatives, state representatives, and encourage them to vote for Emma's law. Now, my sources tell me that they believe the law will pass. Uh, we want to make sure that it does. Don't ever depend on that. Yeah, I think it will pass. And we want to make sure that no more loopholes get added to it. And if any, any way possible to reduce that alcohol level that they have to pass when they blow into that interlocking device, that would be good. But the bottom line is we want this law passed. I'll put up uh, a, a, a link where you can go and find out who your representative is if you're not aware who it is and how to contact them. All right. We'll probably talk about this and other things on our next show, which will be recorded this coming Monday uh, for Another Voice with Eric and Friends at canigetawordin.com. You can also go to uh, Facebook and find us there at Another Voice with Eric and Friends. See our YouTube videos on Be Another Voice and go to Twitter at Be Another Voice. These are all the ways to get in touch with us and we want to hear from you. So until we speak again, get out in your community and make a difference.